Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Dustin Meyer and we're going to go over Lightroom CC. Uh, I know it's been out for a while, however, um, you know, I figured after working with it for a while, I'd show you guys some of the features and also, honestly, to kind of compare it to the Lightroom CC desktop version or classic as they refer to it now and just show you some of the things that I've learned over the time that it's been released and basically just give you guys an honest opinion about what I think it's good for and what I wish it had and you know just kind of all that stuff so for the most part for those of you guys that have not been working with it um, this is really for you and for those of you guys that have been working with it hopefully I can show you some features that maybe you haven't used yet or you just haven't known about so Let's just kind of begin. So I'm going to start by importing, let's see here, uh, some photos. So G-Ray 2015, 904, okay. All right, so first of all, um, if you guys know about using collections in the traditional Lightroom, Lightroom CC has done something where instead of doing that, they call it albums now. Uh, you can start by creating a folder, which is sort of like, you know, your categories for the different albums that you're going to be making. And I already have a commercial photography um, folder. So what I'm going to do is, first off, just like with uh, Lightroom Classic Desktop, I'm never going to get used to saying that. <laughs> But um, <clears throat> let me just check here. Okay, so just like before, it automatically determines whether or not you've already imported a certain group of photos. And I think I found a group of photos from a while back that I haven't used yet. So, um, and this was from an editorial shoot that I did for a local uh, magazine. So since I don't see it, I think we'll be okay. So uh, if you just click on commercial, and then type in uh, create an album that's kind of like a subfolder aka a collection and you can check to make sure that it's inside the folder you know whichever category it is so I'm just gonna type in uh, uh, AW media uh, let's see we'll just call this test so I can't remember the name of the shoe because it's been a while, so we're going to go ahead and create that. Okay, so uh, we just want to make sure everything is selected. If anything has already been imported, then it will be unchecked. So it looks like nothing's in here that has already been imported. So we're just going to add over here, add 53. And while it's doing that, for those of you guys that don't know, Adobe has a new system called Adobe Cloud or something like that. So basically what that means is that um, as you import the raw files or JPEGs, you know, whichever you want to do, it will automatically start uploading them to your Adobe Cloud or your, you know, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can pay, I think it's uh, 10 bucks a month for a terabyte, and then they also have uh, larger sizes, and essentially you can just always check, aka click on the little cloud over here, and it'll show you uh, how much space you've used and how much you have left, and you can also upgrade the amount, but right now I'm just using the one terabyte because I'm just going to wait until I need more. Uh, the reason why this is actually really convenient is because if you're importing directly from a memory card, it will copy it directly onto your main hard drive instead of an actual external drive, but then you can set a certain percentage amount of how much of your main hard drive you want uh, the Lightroom files, uh, the Lightroom CC files to take up, and as those images get uploaded and once you start getting closer to how much of that percentage of free space you want to reserve for it then it will remove the raw files from your computer after it's uploaded it to Adobe Cloud uh, which is kind of nice uh, but for those of you guys that are a little bit more OCD like I am uh, you can you know copy them onto your network drive or an external drive first and then just import them directly from that external drive so that those images won't be uploaded directly to Adobe Lightroom and then taken off your hard drive. Those will stay on your external drive without uh, without them being removed. But they'll also be added, you know, backed up to your uh, Adobe Cloud, which is, you know, actually really nice. So 
as you can see, it imported them fairly quickly, which is really nice. And um, these little, you know, blue little uh, circle things as they rotate basically means that they're being uploaded right now. So if we click over here, it'll say syncing 51 photos. So uh, if those of you guys have been using Lightroom Classic or the desktop version, uh, if you've used the Lightroom Mobile where it syncs everything, <clears throat> excuse me, in your catalog to <clears throat> excuse me sorry <laughs> but um, if you use the syncing feature from Lightroom Classic to the Adobe Mobile uh, Lightroom Mobile uh, this is kind of a similar way to do it so uh, what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna go through some of these and pick you know which ones I've already selected and because these were DNGs that were saved uh, with you know they were exported from Lightroom they were saved as DNGs uh, not original files, but DNGs, then it will embed any uh, selections or changes that you've made to the file. And because it's all the same brand, Adobe, then it'll uh, read that stuff. So as you can see, some of these already have a star rating. Uh, some of them already have a flag. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go up to uh, the filter is now up at the top. And we're going to click on the ones that I've already flagged here and it'll narrow it down. Okay, so we're going to go into the edit module here, and I am going to go ahead and see if I can reset. Okay, so as you can see, this one was overexposed, and also, um, you know, I've got this little halo in the background from my, uh, my uh, parabolic that I used in the background, but for this image, I actually kind of liked it because this particular photo was of a woman who is an artist, Hence, you know, some of the painting stuff that you see in the background. So I actually kind of liked it instead of photoshopping it or using one of the other images that wasn't in there. You guys can say whatever you want, but <laughs> I actually kind of liked it. So, so click auto and let's see what it does. Okay, not bad. Um, I do feel like uh, the shadows are brought up a little too high, but, you know, it not only... Uh, you know, did the adjustments and stuff, but it also did a little bit more on the vibrance, which to be honest, I'm not too keen on. So we're going to bring that back to zero. The, uh, the actual, you know, white balance is not so bad either. Uh, if you hit the letter W just like before, then you can check your white balance. I kind of like this one a little bit cooler because too warm. I feel like, you know, I don't know. Well, basically, you know, if I've got the white balance set to the wall or, you know, the image behind, then I feel like it's going to actually match the painting in the background. Let's see. So we're going to go to light and this over here isn't so bad, but we have a lot of white in the background. So we're going to bring it up just a little bit. Plus for this photo, I really kind of like the bright, bright kind of flash look. Uh, highlights have already been brought down, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Let's see what happens when we bring the shadows back down. Okay, um, so decent contrast. So basically, I'm, I'm not going to spend my entire time on here just showing you the different exposure adjustments, uh, but down here you've got your different effects, so if you want to add a little bit of a, of a uh, vignette, you can and then uh, grain and all that stuff and then detail what I usually do is just bring them all the way up to the middle optics yes we're going to click those and then that way I kind of fix that now the geometry is basically like your transform so you click on that and you can try auto and let's see what it does it just straightens it up and helps with distortion a little bit but you know for the most part I feel like it looks good I'm not going to spend too much time on it and then also over here, now you've got your crop. So you just hit letter C instead of R, which what it used to be in Lightroom. And then let's see here. Sorry, it's not supposed to be a pun. And then you got your healing brush with all the regular adjustments. So like this little section right here, I'm gonna bring the feather down. And really this is just for demonstration purposes. You can use the brackets key, bracket keys to uh, that's not bad. Use the bracket keys to uh, change the size. And then also you have over here your adjustment brushes. So I'm not going to go into that either because you guys kind of get the idea as far because it's almost exactly like what it is in Lightroom Classic. 
got your gradient filters over here. You've got radial gradient, and then you know over here you can copy settings and also uh, paste settings. Now here's a cool thing that I was really skeptical about about Lightroom or the new version is uh, you can edit directly from here in Photoshop. If the raw file has already been uploaded to Lightroom Mobile or you know the cloud or whatever, it will re-download it and then open it into Photoshop and then you can make all your adjustments even if it's in layers and then you save it in Lightroom, close the file and it'll automatically re-import it back into here but it'll be a layered TIFF if you saved it as a layered TIFF. So, um, so for the most part, you know, uh, as far as color correction, image adjustment, all that kind of stuff, um, it, it feels just like it does in uh, Lightroom Classic. Also, um, now, here's the, uh, here's the real problem that I have, because uh, I also do weddings. Um, there is no batch processing. Um, all you can do is copy paste your adjustments from one image to another and basically you just do if you're on a Mac you know command C or you know PC you do control C for copy and then you go to another image and then you would hit uh, control V to paste the adjustments for a lot of you guys I know that's a deal killer uh, it almost was for me but then I was thinking okay you know, this would not be ideal for editing for weddings um, because, you know, once you pare them all down, which honestly is not a problem in here because you can still, you know, rate them by flag or, you know, you can do star rating, that kind of stuff. Um, and then you can take out the, the throwaway images. Um, you can't do any, uh, you can't do any batch processing. Now, here's one of the benefits of using Lightroom CC versus Lightroom Classic. Now, I know Lightroom Classic has the ability to sync with Lightroom Mobile, but you just right click over here, you click share album, and then it'll bring up a uh, you know distinct URL that you can copy paste and then send to your clients. Now, when it comes to portraits, or actually, you know, not for retail clients, but when it comes for business clients and stuff, whether it's headshots or for a magazine or, you know, commercial shoot or anything like that, then it works out really well because once you've edited everything down and made some minor adjustments, then you share the album directly from your Lightroom gallery to your client and then they can log in and, you know, they can select their favorite, they can leave comments, and then you can get a notification on your phone if you have the iOS app or you know the Android app or what have you, I, iPad, and then it'll say, hey, you know, your client selected a favorite, they also left a comment, you can go in, make the adjustments as needed, and then send the finished image back to the client, even if you had to edit it in Photoshop first, but then you re-import it back into Classic, or back into Mobile, sorry. So I know this has been kind of long, but for those of you guys that are wondering whether or not this is for you, what I would say is it works really well for uh, any photo projects that are probably around 50 images or less. But for those of you guys that shoot weddings where you're importing like a thousand or more images, you know, it would be okay, I guess, if you were going to just pare it down for culling purposes. But when it comes to actually adjusting the images, like batch processing and stuff, it just it doesn't have it. Uh, but the trade-off is that anything you import into here, as long as it's just directly from a memory card instead of you know from an external drive, it will automatically upload them to the cloud. Um, or even if you just import it from an external drive, but if you import it directly from a card, it'll eventually take them off your hard drive and import it up to Adobe as a backup, which you can always uh, re-download the image. So for those of you guys that were wondering whether or not um, you know it works, uh, Lightroom CC is actually included if you have the package, you know, the regular Lightroom Classic plus Photoshop. Uh, but it does have the extra terabyte of you know online cloud backup, um, and you can also do the editing from your phone or iPad or you know whatever you know with color corrections and stuff. I think you can even do local uh, brush adjustments. But um, but yeah, there you have it. I've been using this for a while and I like it. My one request is that it does have batch processing. Um, and I know for some of you guys, it's kind of a deal killer. But for those of you guys that do a lot of smaller projects and stuff, I think it works great. So the integration with Photoshop and the fact that the auto feature is actually 
pretty darn accurate um, along with everything else, you know, well, you know, that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. Uh, I really, you know, appreciate the time you guys spend listening, listening to me uh, babble on. But at the same time, uh, make sure to uh, leave a like if you learned something. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. We've got a great community of photographers. We all love to help each other out and also uh, get notified for upcoming episodes. Just click the little bell next to the subscribe button. And of course, any comments that you guys leave, I will do my best to answer them. So other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Dustin Meyer, and I will see you in the next video.